Hello, welcome back. Um, in this video, we're gonna go over an exercise where we're gonna evaluate the derivative of an inverse function at the given point. So the function provided to us is the rational function x plus three over x plus one. The x's are greater than one. And uh, the derivative of the inverse function that we're gonna check is gonna be the point uh, a equals two. So at this moment, I wanna step back and I wanna show you what it, what the meaning of the inverse function and the formula that is necessary to find the derivative of the inverse function. Well, first of all, I wanna say a few words about the continuity and differentiability of an inverse function. So if you start with the function f, whose domain is the interval i, uh, if f has an inverse function, then, then the following statements are gonna be true. So if f is continuous on its domain, then f inverse is gonna be continuous on its domain too. So continuity of f is gonna imply the continuity of the inverse function. f is differentiable on an interval containing c, and, and if f prime at c is not equal to zero, then the inverse function is differentiable at f of c. So the differentiability of f uh, implies the differentiability of the f inverse as long as f prime at c is not equal to and zero. How do you find the derivative of the inverse function? Well, we use this formula here. Um, so assuming that g um, is the inverse of f, so the derivative of the inverse function is one over uh, f prime of f inverse evaluated at x. Uh, as long as the denominator is not equal to zero. So what we're gonna do next is to check if uh, f has an inverse to start with, then we're gonna check if f is differentiable, and then eventually we're gonna use this formula to find the derivative of the inverse function. First of all, we verify that f has an inverse, um, and, and there's one property to check for the existence of the inverse function and that's called the one to one this property. We check that um, if f of x1 equals f of x2, that should imply that x1 equals x2. So I'm gonna put a question mark here. This is called the one to one this property. So we first write down this equality for um, x1 and x2. So f of x1 equals f of x2. So once we solve this, we should get x1 equals x2. So to achieve that, we're gonna do the cross products here. As you see, the threes essentially are the same, so if you subtract three, they're gonna cancel out, as well as x1 times x2. So if you subtract x1 times x2 from both sides of the equation, they're gonna be canceled out. So what we're left in here is that x1 plus 3x2 equals 3x1 plus x2. So why don't we subtract um, x1 from both sides and x2 from both sides, okay? Subtract x1 subtract x2 from both sides of the equation. Well, once you cancel the twos here, then x1 equals x2. Whenever f of x1 equals f of x2, x1 equals x2. So f is one, two, one. Since f inverse exists, so why don't we go ahead and find f inverse? And we have the guideline to find the inverse of f function. We first convert this equation into y equals x plus three plus one. Then we switch x and y. And the next step, we solve this equation for y. Right, to solve this equation for y, we do the cross product here. So um, put a one here and then do the cross product. So x times y plus one, which is x times y plus x, here, and then y plus three times one is essentially equal to y plus three, and then collect all the y terms in one side of the equation and pull y out, as the way we do here, and, and, and then once you solve it for y, that, that is in fact the f inverse of, uh, the, the derivative of the f inverse evaluated at two is one over f prime evaluated at f inverse at two. So now our task is to find f prime first, and then we're gonna find f inverse at two, and then we're gonna substitute back, substitute those back in here, and then find uh, the value of the, the derivative of the f inverse at two. To find f prime, we're gonna use the quotient rule because uh, we have a quotient of two functions. So why don't we go ahead and then use the quotient rule for, for this function. All right, the derivative of uh, f is what? The derivative of the top, which is uh, x plus three 
times the bottom itself minus top x plus 3 times the derivative of the bottom all divided by x plus 1 squared well the derivative of x plus 3 piece here is just 1 plus 0 which is 1 so this turns out to be 1 times x plus 1 and x plus 3 times the derivative of this piece here but it is just 1 plus 0 so it's also x plus 3 so the x's cancel here so then we have all right, in the meantime, let's find the inverse of, or inverse evaluated at two, okay? Well, we can just find it from the description of the inverse function. So our input is two. So three minus two, and two minus one. So it's essentially one. All right, so, so this expression here turns out to be one over f prime, evaluated at one and we have the description of f prime so all we're going to do here is to plug in one for x okay so if you do that you have minus two divided by uh, one plus one quantity squared which is four if you look at the outlook of uh, the graph of f and the graph of f inverse so the blue one is the function f itself. So this curve has like two branches, right? And then the, the red curve here is the graph of the inverse function, as you see. One branch here, another branch located here. And just to remember from pre-calculus, the graphs of uh, f and inverse uh, functions are sort of like symmetrical uh, across y equals x line. And this is something we can observe it right here. So if this is the y equals x line, so this red piece here is the symmetrical version of the blue one across y equals x, and then this branch here, uh, the red branch, is the is the symmetrical version of uh, blue curve across y equals x line. And we were looking at uh, the derivative of the inverse function at point two and one as you see, and then if you just sketch a tangent line to that, and that is the pink curve here, um, and you can observe like this point is a symmetric, symmetric version of uh, 1, 2, uh, because 1, 2 is symmetric version of 2, 1 across y equals x line. All right, this is the end of the video. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video. Bye.